Welcome to another Pollock Academy mini-sode, where we're going to focus on a progressive era problem, garbage. Not just garbage, but general uncleanliness in the cities. Garbage collecting services date back to the ancient times, but in America, its effectiveness was a little hit or miss. So for this mini-sode, we're going to look at a fascinating character, this guy right here, George Waring. What I like about him is that he was a go-getter. He was outspoken. He was confident. His task was to clean up the streets of New York, and the way he saw it was to get his hands dirty. Before we dive into George Waring, remember that during the Progressive Era, this was a time when a lot of problems needed solving. And one of the ongoing problems with big cities like New York was that with a lot of people comes a lot of garbage. In Jacob Reese's book, Ten Years' War, he stated that in just one city block of New York City was the most densely populated place in the world. How dense, you ask? Well, we don't actually know the real number, but let's get an idea. Reese stated in 1898, 82,175 people lived in 1,201 buildings in just one city area surveyed. And that's with 300 buildings not participating in the survey. So that's a lot of people and not a lot of places to live. So imagine those crowded tenements just piling up their garbage. And no joke, a lot of times they just threw it out the window. Also, I won't even get into the lack of indoor plumbing. I mean, this is what George Waring was dealing with. Look at this example. Look at all the garbage in the street. And look at this example. There's a dead horse just chilling there. Eh, on second thought, let's go back to the first example. Okay, so this picture is at the corner of Bedford and Morton Street in New York City in 1893. And here's the same intersection just two years later after George Waring takes over. And here's the corner of Morton and Bedford today. Now let's take a look at some of the ways that George Waring took a humble job, like garbage collecting, and set in motion a number of things that we still do almost 130 years later. George Waring's job was that of a civil engineer. That means that he had education and training in building and running projects that help cities run. Things like bridges and roads and sewer systems, and in this case, street cleaning. During this time, the problem we're talking about in the overcrowded cities is uncleanliness. But there is also a lot of talk about people getting sick and dying. And these two things were probably connected. The theory of the day was called the miasma theory, which meant they thought that diseases were spread through toxic gases just floating in the air. That theory will later change into what we accept now as germ theory, where specific microorganisms are the cause for disease spread between hosts. Either way, George Waring saw a direct connection between uncleanliness and disease and sought to do something about it. And really, George Waring's ideas were pretty simple. Just start cleaning up. And his version of trash collecting is very similar to what we do today. He began to separate trash into three categories. He called these categories garbage, ashes and street sweeping, and paper and rubbish. Let's talk about ashes first. Remember, this is a time before electricity was widely available to the masses. So people would build fires in their homes for light and for warmth, and sometimes you would see bonfires in the street. George Waring and his crew would collect the ashes, put them on a boat, and just dump them into the river. Probably not cool by today's standards, but moving on. George Waring's last two categories are garbage and paper and rubbish. He would further separate items in these categories and burn what he could for steam power. He put aside valuable material thrown away, such as metals, like aluminum or tin, and then he would resell these items at the city's profit, which, if you look at it, is an early form of recycling. George Waring obviously couldn't do this alone. He assembled a team of street sweepers that were nicknamed the White Ducks or the White Wings. Okay, we're going to pause the narration of this video because I want to talk more about these guys, the White Ducks or the White Wings of George Waring. These men were called that because of their suits. This was called a duck suit. It was like a canvas, strong cotton fabric, came in two pieces. They wore a leather belt and a badge similar to a police officer. Let's get a closer picture here of a white duck here. And yes, their uniforms are white, which is kind of a weird choice, but George Waring wanted them to be conspicuous. And that means to stand out or to be visible. And he did it for safety. He didn't want his men to get hit by a wagon or a streetcar. Imagine like the orange vests or the highlighter yellow shirts you see construction workers wearing today. And what else are they carrying with them? They have a wheeled trash bin to be mobile. Uh, they have a steel scraper, a broom. And in the summer, they would carry a watering can and a key to open the fire hydrants. All right, back to the video. According to George Waring, his garbage collecting methods worked. Look at these two images from George Waring's book. It looks pretty clean to me. In order to promote his methods of trash collecting, George Waring cited the New York Board of Health statistics. He claimed that the death rate declined from around 27% in 1882 to now under 20% in 1896. The rate of people getting sick declined and overall safety in the city improved. He specifically mentions horses stepping on nails as an example. Another interesting way that he marketed himself and his methods was to get children involved. Just like his white ducks, he had groups of children that were street sweepers called White Angels. 
After cleaning up a street or a block, these children could earn cards and ranks like this one, similar to a Boy or Girl Scout merit badge. Now, what's the bigger picture with George Waring? He's a great example of how the Progressive Era impacted current American life. This was a time in history when, obviously, so many problems needed solutions, but this was also a time when Americans began to set society norms and practices, and we still continue many things from the Progressive Era today. And in George Waring's case, we have regular trash pickup, we have street cleaning, community cleanups, recycling, and we definitely know the role of cleanliness when it comes to stopping the spread of germs. Thank you for listening to this Pollock Academy mini-sode.